Hello, and welcome to another episode of Something Something Chat Show with Tom Jimmy Jackson presents After the Movie Review. And I just want to start off by saying that today's review is dedicated to uh, Frank Central Padre, the late Gilbert Godfrey, and the folks over at Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Colossal Podcast. And if you have not heard this podcast yet, Go check it out. Find it wherever you get um, your favorite podcasts and have yourselves a laugh of a lifetime. There are over 400 something episodes, I think, of the show, or 200. I, there's a lot of episodes of it, and it will make you laugh. So, this one's for you guys there. Um, Let's see here, I want to do a little house cleaning, check out the Post Geek Singularity. It's a channel that is ran by uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, with such shows as Midnight Musings, Midnight Metal, Let's Get Physical Media, Fully Articulated, Whining About Movies, My Observations with your captain, Robert Meyer Burnett. And Ladies of the PGS, the newest show on the um, Post Geek Singularity Network, or I should say YouTube channel. And it is um, hosted by RM. And that's every Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. And there they, they uh, talk about uh, embracing masculinity. They talk about sex. They talk about sci-fi, horror, Marvel, DC, and more. They parlay a lot of that um, pop culture for you. And speaking of RM, she has her own channel called Positive Fandom. And that is also here on, you, on YouTube. Um, where she does unboxings, she does reviews such as movie reviews, television reviews, um, movie reviews, television reviews, trailer reactions slash reviews, and out of the theater reviews. And her Apex show, the show that the show the channel runs on is Sunday Brunch Live which is every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific, um, where they parlay all the pop culture that's fit to print, but put into a show. And if you have a YouTube channel or a podcast or an Instagram feed or whatever you want to promote, let them know, and they will put it into the uh, chat, and also they will promote it for you. Because at Positive Fandom, they believe in uh, respecting the creator and celebrating the creator as well. Uh, creator as in, you know, whatever it is you are creating. Um, let's get on with the show. And this is episode 22 of After the Theater, After the Movie Review. And this, the movie we will be talking about today is the 1983 classic, Local Hero. Now, once in a while, a small film comes along and that I have never seen and probably never heard of. And if I'm lucky to have seen it or get to see it, excuse me, uh, there may be a chance that I will fall in love with it, which honestly, with this one I did. Um, that film is Local Hero. And about two years ago is when I first heard of this film from the Gilbert Godfrey Amazing Colossal Podcast. And Frank Sancho Padre recommended it one day, I believe him, and Gilbert were talking about it. And they would bring it up all the time. And it got to a point, excuse me, um, it got to a point 
where I'm like, oh, I keep hearing about this movie. It's just, they keep talking about it. I need to see this. So I went and I purchased the Criterion Collection edition of Local Hero right here. So I, I do own the film and I uh, watched it. The thing was, I was not expecting to fall in love with this film. This is a fantastic film, by the way. Um, it, it is a very small, simple little Scottish film. And watching this film, uh, excuse me, it's one of those days. It's a very rainy day here, and it's, you know how it gets when it rains. You just want to relax. Just saying. Um, now, now, in my teens, I visited England and Scotland, and it made me really want to go and visit a small little town in this film. And it reminded me of those days of, of the two weeks that I was in England and visiting and seeing all the lovely places and the views and whatnot. And I love this film. This film, it's a quirky little film. It's different. And they don't really make films like this anymore. I mean, this, this was made in 1983. Yeah, 1983. And it, it really is a, um, the true, a true independent film for what it is, for what it's worth to, to say. Um, the, the basic story of this film is an American oil company that was ran by a character played by Burt Lancaster, the great Burt Lancaster, has uh, plans for a new refi oil refinery. And they decide to send someone to Scotland as a representative of the company who's played by Peter Riegert. Peter Riegert was in the film um, Animal House. And he was great in that movie, but he is, uh, let me get to that a little bit later. Um, and they want him to buy an entire village and things don't go as expected. And that's the basic gist of the story. Um, now, aside from Burt Lancaster and Peter Rieger, this film also stars Dennis Lawson, who is in Star Wars. And Dennis Lawson is the uncle of Ewan McGregor. And uh, he's in this film. He's fantastic in this film. He's great. Um, also, future 12th doctor, Peter Capaldi, is in this film. And he's fantastic in this film. And, and, and this film is a delightful delightful film and it is wonderfully directed and written by Bill Forsyth. Uh, the film soundtrack is scored by Mark Knopfler who is from uh, Dire Straits. He did Money for Nothing, um, Salt in the Swing. Matter of fact, when Weird Al Yankovic did this, his song um, Money for Nothing, the Beverly Hillbillies parody and um, on its UHF album. Uh, excuse me. Oh, pardon me. Mark Knopfler wanted to play the guitar solo, so it would be just right. And he did. He actually played on the song. Um, the film score sold better than the movie itself, and it was also Mark Knopfler's first film score. Uh, and, and it's a really nice, beautiful guitar. It's a beautiful guitar playing and stuff. Um, so once the movie came out, people went in search of the village with the red phone booth. So in this film, there is a village by the seaside. 
with a red phone booth and people went searching for this um, village with the red phone booth. And it is located as the village uh, Penan, P-E-N-N-A-N -N, on the Moray coast in Scotland. Um, now, on, if you give you a little facts and trivia about this movie, on September 11th, 2000, then Vice President Al Gore was interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. And, and she, he was on her show and he was asked what his favorite movie was and his response was Local Hero. And he was running for president at the time back in 2000. And he, oh, oh, excuse me. He really loved, this is one of his favorite movies. And if you watch it, you'll know why. It's, it's a beautiful, beautifully made movie. Um, the movie was filmed in the style of the old English Ealing comedies. So for an example of an Ealing comedy, I would give you The Lady Killers, which is a great movie. The original one is fantastic. And actually, here you go. You want your Star Wars connections today. Uh, Dennis Lawson, as I said, is in Star Wars. And he's in this film, but to connect it to Star Wars uh, with the Lady Killers, it has Alec Guinness who played Obi Wan Kenobi. So there's your Star Wars connection. Bing. Uh, Michael Douglas was very keen on playing the part of Mac. That went to Peter Rieger, but the director before Sight didn't want someone who came with all that star baggage. You know what I mean? Like uh, being a uh, a star. So um, it went to Peter Rieger, as I said. What I love about this film is that it is small and it has a sense of of community. Um, a sense of the community to it. It's one of those films that you just end up caring about all the characters in it. And I know I say that a lot, but this is true with this movie. It's it's a special movie and it's, it's, it's just one of those movies that you watch it and you're like, oh, you're falling in love with it. And to see Burt Lancaster in it, his character at one point has a therapist who's trying to um, teach him how to be tougher. And so, the length that the therapist would go to to prove his point in this movie is hilarious. I'm not going to tell you what he does, but it gets to be really, really funny. And um, as I was saying before, the, the visuals, the seaside community, the views, everything is just breathtaking. Peter Rieger shines in this film and Here's the viewer's window into this world. And it's, it, it's, it truly is a fantastic movie. I, I can't think of any other words to use or how to explain it. But it's one of those films where you watch it and it's like, I like this. And I literally, after watching it, wanted to watch it again because I enjoyed the experience of it. And you really do experience this movie and you come to care about the community. You come to care about, you know, wanting to live in one of those places where everybody knows each other and it's small and compact. And, you know, it, it, you hang out at the local pub or a bar or whatever, and you all know each other. Local Hero premiered in the US on February 17th, 1983. So that means this coming February 2024 is the 40th anniversary of Local Hero. This is a great 40 year old movie. It's, it's going to be 40 years old, and I highly recommend it. You know, and, and as I said before, you know, these are just my opinions. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to, if you do agree with it, fine. You don't, you know, it's, 
perfectly fine with me. Uh, it premiered in the UK on March 17th, 1983. It had a UK budget of three million pounds. It grossed uh, $5,895,761 in the US and Canada. Opening weekend that made $23,567. And that was February 21st, 1983. And worldwide, it grossed $5,901,632. And as I said before, next year will be the 40th anniversary of this film. And I highly recommend this film for anyone that loves independent film, that loves small movies, that loves something about community, that loves about character-driven story. Because if you're into character-driven stories, this movie is for you. So I would highly recommend it and, and check it out. And if you have seen it, let me know what you think of it down in the uh, comments as well. Why not? Be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are down below. And uh, the show, the two shows that I mentioned will be down there in the, in the links. And also be sure to find Gilbert Godfrey's Amazing Colossal Podcast wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Um, Yes, Gilbert is no longer with us, but I guarantee you the laughs that he left us in this show, you will be thanking me for appointing you to this podcast. You will be thanking me 100% on this because it is one of those shows where you listen to it and Frank's interviewing people, you know, it's going all fine. And then like that, Gilbert will take that chain off the rails and it will go down that mountain. And sometimes you hear Frank going, oh, we're starting early, are we? Um, it is funny. And it is a great listen to, or even we listen to as well. And, and, and you will never forget your first time when you hear the truth about Cesar Romero. That's all I'm going to say is find the Adam West episode where Gilbert and Frank are interviewing Adam West. And you too will find out about Cesar Romero. It's interesting and very funny. But do you believe it or not? Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, lets us know you care. And check out the links below. And as always, wherever you are, wherever you go, there you are, here you are. Where? There. And as always, we are all goof people. Thank you. And have a pleasant tomorrow. Until next time, I'm Tom Jr. Jackson saying bye-bye.